This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar illustrating cool Photoshop tools to improve your still images. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll take you through the process of repairing an image. This is a photograph from 1909. This is what the typical college student wore back then. And as you can see, this photograph has suffered the ravages of time. First thing that I want to do is to straighten the image. If I use the crop tool, so and I'm going to turn off content to wear, I want to crop inside the garbage of the frame, right about there. Notice that I've got this grid. If I click near a corner and rotate, I can align the side of the building with the grid to straighten it. Now this is pretty good depending upon how good your eye is. When I let go, press the Enter key, notice everything smooths out. It's not bad, but sometimes I need more precision. And there we go to this set of tools here that's an eyedropper until you select it and instead we'll choose the ruler tool. The ruler tool allows me to measure the distance between points, but it has a hidden function. If I find something that's supposed to be vertical or something that's supposed to be horizontal, simply draw a line along that vertical or horizontal edge. I tend to prefer the sides of buildings more than drain pipes or street signs or windows. I draw the line and then you see this button up here in the toolbar. You say straighten layer and it now straightens it based upon the line you drew with the ruler tool. So I can straighten an image using the crop tool, but remember that's going to change the size of the image. Or I can straighten an image using the ruler tool. Now again, because of the rotation, I've got some white area here that's going to need to be filled in. And in this case I don't care because I will ultimately get rid of all the torn edges of the photograph. So let's just crop this and get rid of that garbage just to clean this up to make this easier to see. Another problem with a lot of photographs, especially older photographs that are printed on paper, is they tend to fade. And here I've got a very washed out grayscale image. One of my favorite tools is one that's been in Photoshop for years and years and years, and you probably know it as well. It's the levels adjustment. Keyboard shortcut is Command L. This opens up what's called a histogram. What the histogram does is it displays the range of pixels from pure black on the left to pure white on the right. The general way that you adjust this is you grab the black slider and drag it so it finds the start of this curve going up here. And you adjust the white slider until it finds the coming down part of the curve. Now that this gives me a pure black point that says every pixel, which is this value or darker, is set to solid black. And this says every pixel, which is this value or brighter, is set to solid white. I've shrunk the range of pixels to improve the contrast. But the one that I really love is this one right in here. As I grab this slider, I'm adjusting the midtones. I want to pick up the texture of her jacket and the texture of her dress, which is not solid, I want to just sort of enhance that. But notice that when I do, I'm starting to lose the detail in her hat. And that hat is a magnificent hat, and I really don't want people to miss it, so I'm going to pull this back just a bit. Now, I could stop there, but there's a trick that one of my students taught me that I just have to share with you. It's just way cool. I'm going to control-click on this layer, and I'm going to duplicate it. And we'll just call it layer zero copy. So I've got a shot of her on the top layer and the, the bottom layer. Selecting the top layer, I'm going to draw with the, the lasso tool. I'm going to do a real simple, really bogus selection around her head. And now I'm going to do shift command I, which selects everything except her head, and delete it. I delete the background layer, we see we have a floating head. Okay, so now I'm going to go back down to here, deselect this area, open up layer, the levels, pull this up to, we did 49, right about there, 50, and we'll leave the white level alone, and we'll just, I'm looking at her dress, and I'm trying to find something that gives her dress texture, her jacket texture, and now um, we've got that. 
Then I go up to here, Layers Panel. Again, 50. And we'll leave this right about there. And this time I'll slide this down a bit, but not quite so much. So I have a separate setting for her face. Command plus to zoom in. At this point, we, we have a definite difference between the grayscale value of the background and the foreground. And if I was smart, I'd do a better job of selecting her head in the first place. Here, I'll just do the eraser tool and erase some of that foreground to get rid of that halo around her. I'm going to do it quickly simply because I don't want to waste your time because you can see how this works. And if I go up to the brush and just soften that edge just a bit, I end up with a softer so it feathers it back into the background. Yes, this looks pretty bogus because I'm not spending time worrying about it, but you can see how now I've been able to keep the detail in her hair, keep the detail in her hat, and with a better job of erasing and concentrating on what I'm doing rather than talking with you, you can see how we can make that look really quite nice. And I have two different level adjustments because I put her face on one layer and everything else on the second layer. We've got nice texture in the dress, nice texture in the building and the bricks. You can have this nice horse-drawn wagon in the back. This allows me to make some really nice adjustments to faded pictures. And again, by using layers and by copying from one layer to the next, I can do work that otherwise I'd lose her face or her dress would be washed out. Now, we see we've got this spot on her dress Command plus to zoom in so we can see what we're working with. I can get rid of this two ways. I can use the clone tool. Notice I've got the line of the fabric. I'm going to option click directly on the fabric. Make the um, right square bracket and just dragging across with the clone tool. And if we do it properly, we'll pick up the folds up above so you don't realize that something has gone wrong. The other thing that we could do is we could use the patch tool, which I didn't realize until I was practicing this last night, getting ready to talk to you today. Drag around the fabric with the patch tool. And then with the patch tool, just simply drag up. Make sure that your fabric folds align, and done. We could do the same thing with our bricks. Click with the patch tool. Yes, I could clone it, but notice I've got the lines and the bricks. Just drag so the lines and the bricks align. So it looks like they're all part of the same piece of paving. Done. The other thing I could do with the patch tool is, let's go back again. Step backward. Okay. With the patch tool drawn, now let's filter this. Let's uh, feather this and dial in about a... A 14 pixel feather. Now that softens the edge, so when I drag it, I gotta align the bricks. I have a hard time remembering which way to move in that case. And now, because I've got the soft edge, it looks maybe more believable. Look at where we started, and look at where we ended up. Better framing, straight up and down, we got rid of the spot on her dress with the clone tool. We got rid of the problem with the bricks with the patch tool. We cropped it, rotated it. The tools we have to clean up our images and repair inside Photoshop is pretty amazing. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at cool Photoshop tools to improve our still images. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 263. By the way, membership is a great value when you need to stretch your training dollars. Membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,900 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.